Hello my loves, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a video for you guys. I don't necessarily think I'm dragging this person or throwing shade, but somebody sent me a video this morning. It was a commercial of a woman who created a jailhouse lockdown pandemic workout and it rubbed me and it rubbed my friend the wrong way. So if you're interested in hearing why it rubbed me the wrong way and why I think that our community and our loved ones are being exploited for this woman's profit in this program, please keep watching. If you're new here, hi, my name is Ro. I am the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Lives and Families, the author of a book called The Comeback Code. We do not glorify or glamorize prison or prison wife life here. Frankly, the whole entire thing is crummy, it sucks, but I will teach you how to make the best out of this one shot deal. If you could do me a favor, I would really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and ring that little bell so you're notified every single time I post a new video every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sometimes we go live on days in between. I do still have my quarantine nails. I can't even look at them without cringing. I'm such a hand talker, I see them, so I have to address the elephant, at least in my bedroom. But let's get into this content. So my friend who, I have to add this, she was training under a fitness competitor. She was about to compete in a fitness competition right when her loved one got caught his case. So she had to put that aside, but she was in very, very, very good shape. I've also competed in fitness. I won the state Jersey championships. I'm saying that to say, this is not me hating on somebody. This woman who developed this program is in amazing shape. I'll pop a picture of the ad right up there. This is not me hating on her. This is not me hating on her hustle. I will pop a picture up there. I've done the exact same things in the past. Let's just take a moment though and talk about my Photoshop skills or lack thereof. I look like a floating person with no legs, besides the point. When my friend saw this, she saw it in a Facebook ad. It popped up because she has things on her Facebook page related to fitness. Like I said, she was about to go compete and she has things related to jail. So this popped up for her. It was part of the algorithm. She saw it. She was appalled and she sent it to me. And frankly, at first I was like, um, I don't know if I see the biggest deal in it, but as I watched the ad and as I continued watching it, to me, it got worse and it got worse and it got worse. And I got upset because once again, our situations and our loved ones are being exploited. And not only are, there, are they being exploited, they're being exploited for this woman's personal gain and she has absolutely no idea. To me, it's insensitive. This woman lives in Ireland. So giving her the benefit of the doubt, let's say she doesn't understand the current climate of the criminal justice system in America. Instead of bashing her, I'm going to take you through her ad and I'm gonna tell you why I think that this is slightly offensive. Not only to somebody who supports a loved one who's incarcerated, which I do think it's offensive to us, but also to anybody that's home during the pandemic in the world right now that you're trying to build a program to capitalize on our pain, not hating the hustle, but you're charging $100 for this program. You quickly threw this together. You got professional production to do it. You can afford to do that. So in my opinion, you should be giving this program away for free. In my opinion, if you're gonna capitalize on us, if you're going to exploit us, give some money back. Maybe sell it and give that donate that money to the prison system that's struggling right now. We're so anxious that our loved ones aren't even going to come home and you're worried about finding a man who will go up against a chain link fence trying to get himself, you know, oh, I'm locked up, I'm inside, I'm locked up just, by, just like you guys, not even a little bit. And again, this is a teaching moment. This isn't hate. This isn't me dragging her. This isn't me throwing shade because remember a few videos back, we all kind of got slapped on the wrist where we said that now we know what it feels like to be in lockdown. Now we know what it feels like to be on the inside. None of us do unless you've lived it, unless you've been there, unless you yourself have been locked in a cell for days on end without TV or Wi-Fi, without a refrigerator, without a comfortable bed and blankets and pillows and a shower and a change of clothes and the list goes on and on and on you have no idea 
This woman, frankly, has no clue. And that's where this hit me. So let's go through the ad. I will share my thoughts with you guys. Let me know if you guys think that I'm overreacting or not. Listen, in this video, I talk about my thoughts on one of the most successful business women in the country and potentially even the world. And she can turn anything into a money making business. She can be the world's biggest opportunist, no hate, all respect for that. And she hasn't even jumped on this pandemic. This woman who doesn't have skin in the game will, I don't know, I don't like it. The whole thing is just, it's in poor taste if you ask me. Okay, without wasting any more time, I've babbled enough. Let's get to it. Okay, so let's start here. The whole sales page, the beginning, where she is dressed up like a sexy inmate, like who has a fetish about inmates? But her body's sick. So much respect for the dedication it took to get that. But if you think about the whole sexy inmate thing, that's just, you're trying to capitalize on people that have inmate fetishes? What? Okay. So another thing about the sales page is that you could tell she uses all different kinds of terminology. She's just using catchphrases. She uses words like shackles and we'll go through that in a second, but let's just play the commercial right now. When I find myself thrust into the world of training from home, what I wanted to do was create something where you could feel alive again. Those who take on this challenge are going to emerge the part about her hanging from the, what is that, molding on the wall, that's true. Adam does do that. He does pull-ups around the ledge of the tier, but just wanted to say that. Just want to throw that in there. Still not liking this program. From home confinement, not only feeling amazing, but looking amazing. Okay, she said when you emerge from home confinement, here's the thing. She's just, she's no skin in this game. She doesn't know anybody who's incarcerated. You could tell by things that come later. However, she's using just so many catchphrases like home confinement. She uses shackles. She uses, let's just go through the sales page. I've unlocked how to escape the gym to get killer glutes. She says... COVID feels like a prison sentence, jailhouse training, break free, escape. So many words where she's just, it's just, ugh. to me it's slimy. It's just slimy. Let me go back to the video. Prison inmates are some of the most jacked people on earth, yet they can Okay, so that part about the guy going to the fence and grabbing it with, you know, kind of slamming himself up against the fence, like, help me, help me, I'm stuck in here. Trying to show the comparison between them being on lockdown and us being on lockdown because of this quarantine. It's just, that was my friend's biggest gripe with this. She's like, I can get past some of the other stuff, but that is just a knife in our hearts. That is insensitive. That is what, like, what, what's the point that has nothing to do with one or the other. It is not six of one, half a dozen of the other. It's just not. Meanwhile, we're here worried about our loved ones that are not getting medical care. They're stuck in there. We don't know what's going on in there. And you're taking these images and you're capitalizing on them. You're trying to make money off of them. Have access to gyms. All they have is their own body. Okay, well, that's not exactly true majority of institutions do have gyms a lot of them still have weights a lot of them don't and you do have to rely on your body weight but they still have equipment like adam has access to bikes and rowers and they have classes and they have equipment inside of the gym so really the only time that this something like this where they 100 percent only have their body weight to rely on would be if they were locked in a cell 24 hours a day or 23 and one, or if they were in the hole. So yes, they do have to rely on their own body weight, but at the same time, there's gyms there. Like this just shows you no, no, you don't know what you're talking about. The jailhouse shred is a training system which mimics that which you would do in the gym, except there is zero equipment needed. Because of the- Which is beautiful. That's great. Don't call it a jailhouse workout. Call it something different. By this training, works the cardiovascular system and the muscles at the same time. Okay, this part also bothers me. With this guy, it's so stereotypical. He's tatted out. She's 
in what a jail cell with him she's supposed to be in a jail cell with him in her little sports bra and her camel toe leggings what trainer is going into prison like that in time it pushes the body into yeah in his gray sweatpants in his prison outfit with his female trainer in there with a bikini top on come on huge fat burn it is possible to lose eight to ten percent body fat in only four weeks okay Let's talk about that for a second. Fitness background, sports medicine degree. Is that possible? Sure. But let's be realistic. The higher you are in body fat, the faster you will lose body fat. The closer you are to goal, the leaner you are, the lower in body fat, the slower you will lose body fat. So while this is 100% possible, she's making claims that are not probable. Not many people are gonna lose eight to 10% body fat in four weeks doing a prison workout, body weight, whatever, I don't buy it. The nutrition side of the program is extremely simple. I didn't want- Okay, here's another part that gets me. In what prison lockdown are they getting fresh peppers that looks like a pan, a stove to cook on, some soy sauce to season their food. What? Here's the deal, my friend. You are given three meals a day. One would be probably some sort of maybe cold cereal and a piece of fruit if you're lucky and you're at a lower level, not usually in a penitentiary because they're afraid you're gonna make wine with it. Then you're gonna get for lunch and dinner either a bologna and cheese sandwich or a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. In fact, Last time Adam was locked down for, I think it was two or three weeks, he literally had to stop working out because he wasn't being fed enough calories in order to keep up with his workouts. He was losing too much weight too fast. So while maybe yes, when you're on lockdown, you will lose 10, 10% body fat in four weeks because you are literally being starved to death, not with your cushy little program with your peppers and your frying pan and this and that and be grateful that you have that out here but don't call it a prison lockdown workout don't it's just not cool now if somebody like big herc did this program right now i would buy it i would promote it i would push it to you guys why because he's had skin in that game he knows exactly what it feels like to be on lockdown. He knows exactly what workouts he did while he was inside. He knows exactly what equipment was available to him and what wasn't. And he also knows what it feels like to be locked in a cell for 24 hours a day for days and weeks, months, and maybe even years on end. You lady, you don't. With all due respect, you don't. You don't have to source hard to find ingredients. <laughs> Sourcing hard to find ingredients, I guess, which you can stockpile from the commissary. Not that you know that once a lockdown is going to come, but <laughs> you stockpile your clean sourced ingredients. Sure. I've done all the work for you. All you have to do is plug and play and get the results. At a time when people are isolating at home, we wanted to make sure that we provided unparalleled levels of support. We have a private Facebook community of not only very experienced coaches, but also of other participants who are there cheering each other on every single day. I'm also going to be doing live coaching sessions. Unless you have a contraband cell phone, my friends, you are not getting on a Facebook group. You are not getting live support from a coach unless you're locked in with a roommate, a cellmate, or a few. And one of them happens to be this world-renowned, world-class fitness coach that's going to coach you. Here's the thing. You don't have any access to a shower after you work out. And really, I don't think anyone cares to support you. Unless maybe your loved one is writing you letters back and forth in the mail. That's a type of support, but no. Every single week in the group. We are offering some absolutely incredible prizes. We wanted to offer something to motivate you into action and to keep you going. The jailhouse shred training is completely unique. And best of all, you don't need... Okay, so this is the part that I think irks me the absolute most. Is that originally I thought, you know what? You got to give it to her. She's embracing the hustle. She is probably 
hurting for money maybe, you know, she might have lost her job as a personal trainer at the gym. But then as I dug more into it, one, that's absolutely not true. Two, the way that this video was produced was a significant amount of money to do. My friend found this through a Facebook ad, meaning she's paying to promote this. And the nail in the coffin is that she is offering $5,000 for first place, $1,000 for second place, and $500 for third place, meaning $6,500 just in prizes. So with this program being sold for $97 a pop, she anticipates getting thousands, tens of thousands of people who are buying this program. Now there are ways that she could have gone about doing this that would have been totally respectable. I would have promoted it. I would have probably bought it. I would have supported her. But that would be one, if she was giving this program away for free in order to support people while they are locked down in their homes. Just like however many other gyms out there, so many gyms, mine, are offering free Zoom classes, free nutritional classes, workouts every single day, multiple times a day for free because they wanna support people through this. People that have the funds and the money to do that help people that don't, help people who are suffering. You're trying to charge people when most of the whole entire world right now, especially the United States, People are out of work, people can't pay their rent, people are behind on their utilities, people have, if they are getting some sort of pay, a lot of states are now cutting pay, they're furloughing people from their jobs, but you wanna make this program with your boatloads of money so you can capitalize on people's pain, you can profit from people's pain, it can all go into your pocket, and you're gonna nail the coffin and give out all of this money in prizes where you should be giving out this program for free or maybe charging like $2 for it. And of those $2 or charge the $97 and give back those boatloads of thousands of dollars to the incarcerated community to help people feel supported, donate masks, donate PPE to hospitals that need it. All you're doing with this jailhouse lockdown program is lining your own pockets. And I don't like that. That is so slimy. This whole entire thing is just in poor taste, if you ask me. Lastly, Miss Chris Kardashian is, this is all respect, this is said with respect, is an opportunist. She's a brilliant businesswoman. She has taken anything that any of her daughters, and I believe Rob too with his socks, but anything that her daughters are good at, enjoy, have hobbies, like, and even their pitfalls and their fails, and she's turned it into multi-million or billion dollar businesses for her children. If she has not capitalized on this pandemic because she feels bad, because you don't exploit people when they're down, you don't kick them when they're down and suffering, then nobody should. And that, not that she should, but that shows how poor taste this program, in my opinion, is. Now, that said, look at Kim Kardashian. She just released her documentary called The Justice Project. I will be reviewing that in a collaboration later this week. So I don't want to get too into that. But something that Kim said over and over in this documentary, which made me respect her a million times more than I already do, love her, always have. I totally understand the Kardashians' sisters and their bond and all of that stuff just because I have the exact same family dynamic. Four sisters and a brother. So I get them in ways that other people don't. However, Kim has said in this documentary over and over and over again, she said, I don't claim to be an expert. I don't really know a lot about this. However, I feel called to do this because people are suffering. There is so much ignorance in the world. And if I can use my influence and my celebrity to support people, to write parole letters, to go speak on your behalf, to speak to the president of the United States, to get somebody clemency, I will do it because these people are suffering. It's not fair. And I'm in a position where I can help. So why not? I respect her so much for that, for showing how huge of a problem this is. She's not making a penny when she donates her money to have people get tattoo removal. She hires her own attorneys to represent these people on her dime. She flew out to DC to meet the president on her dime. 
In contrast, you have this woman who all she's doing is capitalizing on this, exploiting the prison community, exploiting people, jailhouse workouts and all this stuff to line her own pockets for a very self-serving agenda. And it's slimy. It just stinks. I keep using those words, but it's just like it makes you feel slimy and disgusting and I can't get behind it. And then the nail in the coffin to me is her like with this shirt with one button at the bottom, inmate number, da 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 da. If Kim Kardashian, who has skin in this game, has not posed in a sexy picture like that, nobody has a right to. She has a right to because she's helping people out. But she hasn't even done that because she doesn't need to feed into any fetish related to inmates. Like, who, who are you who are you feeding into? Who are you marketing to with that photo? It's just in such... It's just trashy to me. It's tasteless to me. And believe me, I'm all about modeling and being sexy and showing off a beautiful, fit female physique in any way that's comfortable to you or for you. But that is just not cool. Like my friend said, let me, oh, I don't have it here. But my friend said, she's like, she's feeding into that whole prison fetish con air movie nastiness. She also says in here that many of you have heard me declare I will never make a home workout program then coronavirus hit. Right, so you're going against everything that you believed in, said, to capitalize on people's pain. And I don't like it, to make money off of people's pain. And I don't like it. So this is not me dragging her. I hope it doesn't come across like that. This is not me throwing shade. This is me hopefully making this a learning experience and a teaching moment. She might not even realize, she probably doesn't realize that this is offensive to people. She's in Ireland. So maybe in Ireland, she's not aware of the crisis within the criminal justice system in the United States. So maybe this can teach her. Maybe it'll spark ideas. Maybe she'll donate some proceeds of this program to incarceration and, and helping people in either Ireland or the United States or maybe wherever she gets the most business from. And I have to say, this is this picture of her, she's hot, she's beautiful. And I don't wanna ever take away from the fact that she, how much I respect the dedication that it takes to build and maintain a physique like this. She's beautiful, she's gorgeous. Clearly she has a ton of followers. So I just beg her to rethink this and maybe go more of the Kim approach where you can use your platform and you can use your influencer status to open people's minds and hearts about this. Just remember that there are so many of us out here that we don't know if the man behind the fence who's grabbing the gates, we don't know if we'll ever see him again. We don't know if he will live to see another day because we don't know how catastrophic this virus is going to leave prisons. We don't know how bad it's gonna be once it starts spreading in there. We've already seen a large amount of catastrophe in a small amount of time in the facilities that it's already at. Use your status to help people get out. Use your status to help people get compassionate release. Use your status to help people actually get real home confinement and not the type you're talking about in your cushy home with your pretty little studio and your refrigerator and your frying pan and your fresh vegetables. And I can go on and on and on, but I won't. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Am I overreacting? Do you think this was a good idea? Are you offended as well? Not that I'm offended maybe is a strong word, but do you see where I think it's in poor taste as well? Let me know what you think. Keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart to all of yours. I'll see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>